Okay. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Stephanie, and I'm one of the organizers of Iowa Dev Scout, but today I happen to be a speaker. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk today about money, a subject that is near and dear to my heart, uh, specifically in relation to floating point errors. So, um, okay, I don't know. So the scope of my talk today would be based on a consumer-facing apps that will use only simple addition or subtraction. So anything like a budget app or maybe a payments app where you don't have to do too many crazy multiplications or divisions to your figures. And uh, for the reference point today, I'll be using Singapore dollars. So has anyone heard of Ariane 5? Has anybody heard of Ariane 5? Okay, one person. Okay, so uh, Ariane 5 was a rocket that, well, crashed and they're really bad because of a, a floating point error that the scientists made. So it was launched in 1996 uh, and it crashed 40 seconds after its takeoff. So, um, so it was on its first voyage after one decade of development and it cost over $7 billion to produce. And um, it turned out the cause of its failure was due to a software error in its initial reference system where there was a conversion of a 64-bit floating point number relating to its horizontal velocity with respect to the platform that was converted into a 16-bit signed integer. So the number that was convert that um, it was originally supposed to be was larger than 32,767, which was larger than the largest installable um, integer, I mean, um, value in a 16-bit signed integer. So very off. So, and disaster ensued. Okay, the next question I have for you is, does anybody know what salami slicing means? Okay, nobody does. Okay. Hmm? Uh, okay, um, it's, it's not like going to cold storage to get um, someone to slice salami for you, but it refers to the act of removing or reducing something um, in small amounts over a large period of time so it's less noticeable to changes. So that is sometimes what happens when we ignore floating point errors. That, you know, either when we run up or run down and if we keep doing that, errors tend to build up over time. Okay, so how does this relate to money? So money basically is, uh, like this value here, is uh, in base 10. So if you had to display, if we had to see the notation of this, so this would be, uh, sorry, 9.2 to the power 10, uh, 9.2 times 10 to the power 0, so 9.2. So in money, like in Singapore dollars, the cent is the, like the smallest unit of it. And usually, like 100 cents makes a one dollar. So sometimes we divide cents by hundreds in order to get the value that we can display here. So at times, like, you know, when you enter like a floating point type into Swift without determining what type it is, it will automatically infer the type is a double if you don't specify what type it is. And that can be kind of a problem when displaying a, a currency, especially if the currency has an amount that, um, like if you look at a dollar, an amount that is below a dollar. So anything below, in between zero and one will, ha will have trouble being expressed. And you will lose certain precision when it comes to Maybe like the add a lot of figures together, you start to see the growing errors. So, uh, okay, I triple E seven five four is a technical center for floating point computation. So it 
comprises the, si uh, the negative sign to the power of uh, whether the digit, I mean the number is positive or negative. So if it's um, if it's positive, the sign would be the power of zero, and if it's negative, the sign would be power to one. The many things are, and the exponent so to the power of whatever exponent it is. So it, um, floating point type numbers will store num will store numbers based on this notation, and uh, therein lies the problem when the numbers. Right, fall below the decimal point. So, this is the definition of float and double in Swift. So, float is 32 bits, and then double is 64 bits, which gives us slightly more precision because uh, there's a limited number of bytes that the, the computer can store for each number. And so, if you look at 920, the number I showed you earlier, it actually is displayed as this in uh, base 2 if you want to you can check it out if you want okay and but on um, it cannot be stored particularly accurately like when it's in so as a floor or a double for example uh, this one looks like a float and that one looks like a double so not exactly nine dollars and twenty cents, maybe a bit less. I mean, if if I owed you nine dollars and twenty cents and I gave you back maybe nine point one nine, I'm not sure if any of you'd be happy with that, All right? So um, what's the rest of my money? So um, my okay, another example I want to show is. Uh, Okay, another example that I I have is is um okay for example I uh, borrow one dollar from Vina, so I'm kind of short of cash, so I decide to pay her back every day one cent, and then. Um, and I pay her back one cent every day through uh, a not very well made app that uses a float to to store one cent. So okay, so uh, every day I will um, I will pay Vina back one cent through this app. So if I pay her back uh, one cent every day for a hundred days, can anybody tell me how much I will end up paying her back? Okay, so, uh, all right. One dollar. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> maybe, maybe, so, okay, let's take a look. All right, anyway, my, number, my answer is there, so, it will be there, there, so, not quite a dollar as we hoped, right? Through this, like, incremental errors do end up adding up. So, I mean, this is only a small, Example, but if you're adding like huge sums of numbers over a long period of time, the error can be a lot larger, right? So, I have another question for you. So, if I add, uh, okay, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, what does it give me? Who says 0 0.3? <laughs> Okay, so, um, all right, let's take a look. Oh, well, it's a little bit more than that. I hope, I don't think you meant to pay me that much more. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, my proposed solution to, like, alternative to using uh, floating point numbers to, to store your units of currency or money, right, is to use an integer. An uh, integer to store like every, hang on, sorry, an integer to store every um, like smallest unit of currency there is. So now programming languages have a solution built into to, uh, 
to solve this problem of floating point numbers. So uh, like a solution that is readily available in Swift is using like an integer to represent the smallest unit of currency in Singapore dollars that happens to be one cent. So one cent is the smallest unit. So um, I have a like a sample implementation of like how I would um, I would uh, write my create my money struct if that I think works. It works for me, but depending on what you need, it could work for you. So um, basically, uh, every single kind of uh, money type will have an amount that is stored as an integer. And then uh, this amount will have an associated currency with it because there's no point having money without currency associated with it. So I've created uh, my... Okay, I referenced this from somebody. So And I made a couple of changes to it, like the currency type. So with a code, because every single currency has a specific code, its name, and then the minor unit, which is defined as the number of decimal points it has when displayed, uh, it has. So in terms of euro, it's uh, called it's UR, and then the minor unit is two because it has cents. And uh, for Japanese yen, it has no sense, so zero minor units. Okay, so if I also created a method to format the currency because we tend to, um, well, I think the reason like why we deal money is so that we can display it to our users, right? So, so we have to format it based on, like in my case, um, like dividing the number of cents to display as um, as money, so I divide it by ten to the power of the number of minor units it has, and then I format the string. So it works like that. So if I have my I have um, one thousand forty six cents, and then uh, I'm trying to add eight hundred and forty six cents together, so I will have. Oh yeah, as I mentioned, I also created some uh, operation types so that you can add these together. So you just add left and right. Okay, and then if I add it together and then I format my currency, you will have that. 18.80. E. So um, another advantage is that you can, like, if you don't want to display euro, you can easily just change it to uh, Japanese yen, which doesn't have a minor unit, so you just change it and then I'll show there. Okay, so uh, I like um, I guess currency is something is pretty like um, like if we to work with in a sense that we always want to maintain the highest possible level of accuracy that we can get. So I think that it's uh, best to work in the smallest unit of currency by, uh, by, like, by taking account of like, the whole amount of money I need to deal with in cents and then um, displaying it only, like dividing it only to display it but never doing any of the operations using that uh, value to display. Like for example, like over here, when I do divide it um, to show I'm converting it to a decimal and then, and then uh, displaying it. But uh, I do not use this value to add it together, uh, to add anything together or to subtract anything from anywhere because I find it a lot um, safer to do it this way, but you can do it any other way if you want. But uh, this way works for me. And okay. So yeah, that's uh, so that's all I have. I just hope that 
Yeah, if, if you could take away anything, uh, try to avoid using uh, floats or any floating point types to represent uh, money. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>